more, that people want something even more than they want bread. Even more than they want something to eat. Even people that are really hungry. And that the true bread is something people. And through the words of John's Gospel today, Jesus dares to declare to us that that something deeper is really Him. Nothing else, just Him. And so we have in Him this God who gives up the safety of heaven and finds His way into the danger and the turmoil and the sadness and the glory and the violence of this world. <coughs> who suffers and dies and forgives those who have done him the most harm, rises from the dead, and sees fit to keep coming back and coming back and coming back to us in order to finally make every last one of us his own, and God's own. This isn't just any God that chooses. <coughs> this is a very particular God. Jesus says that this is the bread that gives life to the whole world. My flesh is true food. My blood is true drink. Take this. Eat this. Drink this. He doesn't try to make this any more symbolic or any less striking than it is. He just says it. So you and I come to church on Sunday, and, and we often want to start with ourselves. Right? We say, well, what's going on with me? What can I relate to? What do I, what do I think I'm looking for? What do I want to hear? What do I want to have? And sometimes we do that. Sometimes we start there. comes to us and he says here I am I am the bread take me in eat this bread eat this and you will never die that's quite a thing to say and, and sometimes I wonder I, I really wonder why I ever found room for him in my backpack I do I, I think sometimes he, he's troubled with me you know and I'm still figuring out who he is, and I'm still reckoning with what he means, and I'm still trying to get my head around what he means. Sometimes I say, why would I ever open that back back up from the beginning? Sometimes, sometimes I wonder, whatever would I do, whatever would I ever do, my backpack is so full of other things that I have never found any. As we turn to our time of prayer today, I want to invite us Recently, Jean Woolen and Ed McCartney gave prayers and Scott Rice. Uh, Dr. Herbert is also in the hospital now, and it's his birthday, so we want to remember Don also. As we find ourselves uh, immersed in these quiet moments, silent moments that we don't always get, and, uh, maybe some of us have a lot of silent moments by ourselves. But now we have these silent moments with our church community. And in that time, I invite us to lift up the prayers of our hearts. And uh, if you have words that you speak out, let them be spoken out in any form they are spoken out. We're welcome to do that as we join our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray.
God, the one that you offer us the bread of life in Jesus, as you became flesh and became food for us, and as the blood flowed through his veins, you became bread for us. He is the real bread of life that comes down from heaven. And we are hungry, God. We're hungry and we sometimes fill our hunger with our money and our power, with our goodness and our image. Sometimes we fill it with anger, sometimes we fill it with fear. Because we can find no other food, or at least we don't think we can find anything else. Fill our lives with busyness and entertainment. God, thank you that you give us the real bread. Help us to take it and eat it, find life that goes on forever. Help us to feed the world, God. We know the world is hungry as well, hungry for love and acceptance, hungry for reconciliation, hungry for peace, hungry for justice and kindness, hungry for help, hungry for healing, Hungry for understanding. God, feed us so that we can feed others. Help us to be food as you are our food. Pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. He teaches us to pray as we pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. At this time, I invite the Linder to come and to uh, introduce the ministry moment about uh, another exciting event that we're going to do that uh, helps other people. That better? Yeah. Okay. In a minute, a wonderful video show to show you about Heifer International. But in the meantime, here's a short quiz to see if you've been paying attention to the messenger the last month. Okay, here's the first question. And you can take notes, jot down things if you need to. Our church has contributed $4,346.50, $43.56, toward a $5,000 um, amount necessary to finish another arc for Heifer International. Here's the question. How many arcs will this make? Anyone? Twelve? Eleven. This will make eleven arcs this church has given at five thousand dollars apiece. Okay, here's the second question. Do the math. No, I got that done. That leaves six hundred fifty-three dollars and fifty cents. To go. Here's the question. How can you help finish this arc by September 20th? Anyone? Donation, yes. How can you do that? Well, you can stuff some cash or a check in an envelope that's right in front of you. Jot down uh, your name and heifer, and that will help. You can do that today. You can do it any Sunday. You can stop in the church office any day. Uh, it's really easy. And we only need about $650.
And um, actually, my count is inaccurate because I gave this same little promo at first service. So um, it's even less than that. Third question. This is the last one. What's going on September 20th? Yes, Barbara Oaks will be here. She's from Pepper International. And we're going to be having a missions banquet that you're going to love. It's all about Pepper International and the Seagoing Cowboys, of course. So anyway, come enjoy. In the meantime, help us complete this art. We're so, so close. And on to the video. Thank you. This is Alton Brown for Heifer International. And um, I used to have a goat. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it wasn't a goat. Maybe it was a, a cow, or a water buffalo, or a sheep, or a llama, or trees, or chickens, or even bees. In which case, the dish was perhaps odd. Okay, my goat's not really missing. It went to a family, somewhere, to even here at home. It went to people who really needed it. But why a goat, you might ask, or a cow, or a water buffalo, or bees? Why not send tractors if you want to help? Well, First, because in most of the uh, places in the world where Heifer works, the nearest gas station is a very long way off. The gas probably costs about thousand dollars a liter. As for a mechanic, well, that's like in the next country. And let's face it, an animal has a much better engine, one that can move people's lives. You turn it on, it gives you milk, or wool, or eggs, it plows fields, it produces, how can I say this politely, um, fertilizer that makes crops grow. It's like giving someone a small business because all of those products, the milk, the wool, the eggs, turn into income uh, for medicine, school, clothing, a better home, a sustainable livelihood. And the animals produce livestock because you know uh, animals make baby animals. That's what they do. Try that with a tractor sometime. Anyway, the next thing you know, uh, the family is passing on the gift, sharing the animal's offspring and the training that came even with it with another family who does the same thing and so does the next family and the next until pretty soon you've helped to lift a whole community out of poverty. Cool, huh? You see, Ever International isn't just about animals and training. It's about the amazing things that happen when people realize they can stand strong all on their own. Like the resourcefulness and skills they discover, the, uh, the communities they grow, the attitudes that change. It's amazing. Suddenly, hope happens. And it's like somebody turned on a switch. And you know what else is amazing? It's the power you have to make the lasting change happen all over the world every day. That's what my government And that's where you start with one gift to have her international. A gift that grows. And maybe the best hardest working gift you'll ever give. And that, my friends, is a recipe for lasting change. Let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. 